to 20. Uh, I do mean that when I say I thank God for each and every one of you that are here. You could have done anything on today, but you find yourself in the house of God to join us today. We're happy that you did it. We want to make sure that it's not a waste of your time this morning. And so far, I hope that you've been blessed so far being in God's house. For the next two hours, I mean, I'm sorry, for the next few minutes, I'm going to be talking with you, amen, from the word of God, amen. And I uh, would want to use for a scripture backdrop is uh, the 20th chapter, 2 Chronicles, just the first three verses. I put all the verses in there, all 20, just so people think that it's going to be a long sermon. People are like, oh, Lord, we're never going to get through this. No, but we're going to discuss a lot of it. But we're just going to read it in your hearing, uh, just the um, uh, first three verses. You know, we'll do it responsibly because I saw something in the second verse. It's one of those long, long words that I can't pronounce. So when we do responsive reading, I will read the first verse. You read the second. Then I'll read the third verse. If you could get through that, I think it's about a 14 uh, 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 letter word. Amen. I think y'all can speak that. Okay. I think we can do that. Amen. So with that in mind. We want to have a good time in the Word. Amen. Uh, I, I believe at this time that, that the Word from the Lord yes. and that God wants to help someone today. And I believe that you are, you are here on assignment because God has brought you here. And he didn't bring you here so you wouldn't, that you would leave here worse, but he wants you to leave here better than you came. Amen. We're going to read these first three verses. And then we're going to go forth in the name of the Lord. And it's, I'll start reading. I'll, we'll read all three together. I won't be that transparent with y'all. I think I got that. I got that word. Amen. I think I got it. All right. But if I, you know, if I call for something right before it, it's another way preachers like. <laughs> Everybody's like, what's the word? Anyway, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. It came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them other beside the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side Syria, and behold, they be in Hazazer Tormar, which is in Egadi. Good job. Oh, give it. No, stop for a minute. Give yourself a clap. Y'all did that. Y'all did it. Oh, my goodness. And all y'all that lip sync, shame on you. Amen. All right, number three. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast throughout all Judah. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. For gathering together today, we thank you for this occasion to be able to speak a word, Lord, to your people that you've handpicked to be here today. Lord, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for this opportunity, and we ask your blessings, Lord. We ask for your anointing to anoint uh, our mouth to speak what thus saith the Lord, and anoint our ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Lord, we give you praise for all things. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. I want to use for a topic for the next few minutes, flip the script. Flip the script. Amen. Flip the script. Amen, amen. Uh, I, I, I've been talking for about a week and a half from a book uh, it's called Win the Day by Mark Batterson. It's a powerful book. Amen. Very encouraging. And uh, in the book, at the beginning of the book, he gives a lot of good stories and good um, analogies of how to develop great habits if you're going to accomplish great things. Amen. The first thing he says, is that you need 
before you do anything else, is to flip the script. That's the first habit that you should build. Amen. And I'm using that as a backdrop today because it's a habit that we're trying to build today is a habit of serving God, loving God, serving God, and being obedient to God. Amen. We have to learn how to flip the script. Amen. Jehoshaphat is a great guy to start with, you know, and, uh, and as we talk about his story in, in a few minutes, I want to just talk about, I, I shared this uh, about a week ago at the church. I was talking about the American Cup uh, race, and the, the author in the book, the Win, Win the Day, should get that book, it's a good book. He talks about how in, eight, in the 1800s, that uh, they started racing and for, the, uh, for 132 years, this one country won the American Cup for 132 years in a row. And as they uh, were getting prepared for the 133rd, Australia decided that they wanted to get this championship. And the story I shared from the book was that the, the captain from the Australian team, three years before the race took place, he made a recording of the sail that moves in the water, he, uh, the, how uh, the boat moves in the water. He made a recording of them, actually a recording narrated saying that the Australians have won the American Cup. And they had to listen, every team member had to listen to that twice a day for three years. They had to listen to it twice a day for three years. When they got up, they got up, listen, the Australian uh, sailboat team has won an American Cup. When they went to sleep, the Australian a uh, uh, selling team has won the American Cup. Well, when that day came, it was no surprise to them because they had won every day for three years. Yeah. And when it was announced, they were not surprised at all because they had won the American Cup. They heard it all. And sometimes, amen, in flipping the script, Amen. We have to put ourselves in that same way. Instead of saying we're always a failure, it was never going to happen to me, it always happened to somebody else, it never happened for my folks, and things like that, we have to get to the place where we like, you know what? I win. Sometimes, yeah. amen, you know, you, you, know we, you, you have to do that. That, oh, sometimes you have to call yourself on your voicemail and say, I got the job. We want to make you an offer. Yeah. Come on, Bishop. Yes, sir. I even said you have to go dun 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 dun. <laughs> I like to present the song and introduce the others. Mr. and Mrs. Yeah. Put your name in there. Yes. Yes. But <laughs> you have to speak it. You have to envision it. Yeah. You have to see it yeah. come to pass. Amen. Oh. It's the same thing. Sometimes you have to get a voice like Morgan Freeman to narrate and say, my child, well done, that good yeah. and faithful servant. Yeah. Well done, yeah. that good and faithful servant. Yeah. Because most of us on our best days think that I'm just this far from hell. Jesus. I'm so close. I want disobedient uh, act away. I want mistake away. Oh, Y'all ain't saying that. Amen. Is this helping somebody? Amen. Now, I told you our theme is, uh, we, we, this is our, for the next three weeks, I'm talking about flip the script. About three or four weeks. But today I want to focus on the battle 
is the Lord's. Yes. Amen. It's important that we get that. I, I didn't read all of that that I wanted to read today, but for the lack of time, I just thought I'd get to the point. This, this is important to flip the script because what we find in the Bible that that's the only way that we can win the battle. Amen. We have to learn how to flip the script. Amen. Oh, I had a definition of flipping. Amen. Amen. Not the one that y'all get as a substitute word for cussing. You know, uh, I'm sorry, did I say that out loud? Amen. Amen. I want to read, this is a good one. Amen. To toss or to put in motion with a sudden, a sudden impulse as with a snap of a finger or thumb, especially so as to cause to turn over in the air. Amen. This is important. This is good. You'll like it. You'll like it. All right. So watch this. <laughs> Okay, I'm reading a different definition, dictionary.com, amen? I have to give a, a footnote, amen, amen, uh, uh, to, to change, all right, uh, or to, to uh, another one is, is to cause to switch from one political party to another political party, amen, to move something suddenly, amen, to turn over, Especially with it, with a short, rapid gesture. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just oh, flip, flip the script. Amen. In other words, flip the script is, is just like this. It's turning the page in your life. Amen. Sometimes we stay on the same page too long. And we need to move on to the next, to the new, to the, to the, uh, the uh, greater instead of the worser. Amen, somebody. A lot of times when we look back, and, and sometimes we have to realize that yesterday is history. Yes. Everything that happened before this moment is history. Yes. And being history, amen, sometimes we look at history probably in, my, uh, in three different ways. We look at it as ge geology, ge genealogy. We look at it from personality. And we can look at it from a theology mindset. Amen. And I want to deal with that, that theology mindset. Because what happens is we don't look at life most of the time from a God perspective. Okay, well, can I? Uh, oh, you want me to elaborate on it? Okay, I guess I will. Amen. It's called a uh, pro provincial uh, pro 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 providential, amen, thinking. That means thinking with the mindset that God is in control. Yes. A lot of times it's hard to flip the script because we think that we still got to fix it. Yes. We still yes. got to make it happen. Yes. We still got to, if it's to be, it's up to me. Uh -huh. No, it's not up to you. If it's to be, God's got to help you. Yes. There's one way of thinking of uh, 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 providential providential uh, uh, lead is, is, is that everything leads us back to God yeah. being in control. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. There are cynics out there that believe that it, you know, uh, that it's, it's not built with uh, life is not built with that in mind. Mm -hmm. But we know that the Bible is his story. Yeah. God's story. Amen. That he puts a hyphen in to add us in with it. Amen. When America was built, a lot of times we look at uh, from our leaders that, that, that created America and that, that came over here and worked where we live at right now. They had a providential, provincial, amen, mindset that God brought us here. We can make it here. This is a place that we can do it. Amen, somebody. I'm not talking about all the politics that goes with it. But what I'm saying is that it was that type of thinking, amen, that caused them to move forward, to turn the page on the old world and come to the new world. Amen. That's why we're here today. Because somebody turned the page on the old world, amen, and opened up the book to a new world. Amen. Same thing happened, amen, amen, when we think about Jehoshaphat. 
Jehoshaphat is so, so interesting. When you look at him starting about the 17th chapter of, of first, uh, Second Chronicles, amen, it talks about him coming. He's, he's, he's one of David's great, great grandsons, amen. But the thing about him is that his beginning wasn't as glorious as this moment right now. We see something happening with him. We see that he has taken, amen, the news of the battle that's coming against him. Bad news. Amen. Three nations or more have come to surround him. And as he's being surrounded, the thing is he's dealing with crisis. Have you ever dealt with crisis? Amen. When things come, you know, some of y'all, the three nations are the phone bill, the gas bill, and the, and the mortgage. Amen. They're coming against me like they did Jehoshaphat. I see them coming through the door. Now I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. So what happened is we go back in history. Remember, I told you you can look at history from more, many ways. And so I, I was talking about the theological mindset. Because a couple of chapters before, he was hanging out with the wrong crew, amen, with the wrong king, amen. And the king said, won't you go into battle with me? And he said, sure, I can go into battle with you. Let's do this thing. Let's do this thing. Let's get crunk with it. Amen, amen. Somebody said crunk, that's like 1981. Anyway, and so, so but, 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 you know, an old man trying to be uh, current, you know. But anyway, um. And so they got ready to go into battle. He said, wait a minute. He had enough sense to say, is there a prophet that can let us know what God says about this? And so the king said, oh, yeah. So he had a whole bunch of prophets. Uh, it's about the 17, 18 chapter of, of where we were. And so 400 prophets. Woo, king, king, go into battle. Go, 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 go. Go now, G-O, go. God says, go, 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 go. And then, but he found those prophets not to be God's prophets. Amen. They were evil prophets. He said, do you have any of God's prophets here? He said, yeah. The king said, I, I got one. And so then one king, uh, one prophet came, even the guy that went to get him from the king. He says, <laughs> God says to the, to the prophet, listen, everybody has said that we should go into battle won't you kind of agree with everybody else and go and tell the king, let's go into battle? And so Jehoshaphat and this king is waiting to hear from this prophet. He comes on the scene, and, they, and, and, and the king says to him, to the prophet, uh, should we go into battle? And the, and the prophet said, go, king, do what you want to do. He said, stop playing. Tell me what God said. God said, if you go into this battle, you will not come out of alive. And he says, see what I tell you, every time he comes, he prophesies bad things for me. Every time he does this, and Jehoshaphat is listening, he's contemplating what to do. And as he's listening, the, the king gets mad at this prophet, and they go into battle. But the king said, you know what? Watch this. You stay in your king apparel, your royal suit, Jehoshaphat. I'm going to disguise myself as one of the soldiers. So the, the other king went into battle. And then the, this, uh, the, 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 the enemy that they were fighting against came against, they said, the, the leader of that king, of, that, of those people, the, the, the enemy, said, don't fight great people. Don't fight these soldiers. Look for the king and go for him. So Jehoshaphat was looking like the king, and everybody started coming. And when they got ready to kill Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat said, Lord Jesus, he just yelled out. And God made them go to, they said, oh, that's not the king that we came after. And they spared his life. Jehoshaphat and his crew got up and they ran back. Amen. And what happened with this other king, he got killed. Just like the prophet said. Well, this, so now this Jehoshaphat is being surrounded. And now look at him. Instead of following the same script, he decides, I'm going to go to God for myself. Yeah. I'm going to go and trust God for myself. I'm not going to look for other people to tell me what God is saying. Yeah. I'm going to find out what God is saying for myself. Yeah. He flipped the script. 
he flipped the script. Yeah. As he flipped the script, amen, we'll find out there's about, I, I, for y'all that's New Year, I have what you call an application zone. So I think this is a good time to apply my application zone. Amen. I saw four things that, 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 that the king did in his prayer. Amen. It's in this chapter, verse 20, uh, chapter 20, uh, it's beautiful. Amen. As he went to, the Bible says in verse 3, Jehoshaphat feared and set himself, made up his mind to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast throughout all, all Judah. And as he goes on there, you can see him starting in verse 5, and he starts talking about how he prayed. Well, this is what came out of it. The first thing he does is... When he went to pray, he stopped what the script was. I'm going to talk about the script a little bit in a minute. He told God about his problems. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? He told God about his problem. He told God, this is what's going on. I'm, see, the Bible says acknowledge him in all our yeah. ways. Yeah. Uh, this is verse 6. Amen, if y'all look at that. And, 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 and so the thing is, he, he acknowledged that this problem was in front of him. Sometimes in flipping the script is being honest with yourself. Yeah. I have a problem with. Yeah. I seem to be failing in. Yeah. It seems like I keep doing wrong. Uh -huh. Lord, I can't make it through this situation. Lord, my money is short. Lord, I feel lonely. Tell God what the problem is. Amen? Then it won't turn to an elephant in the room. Anyway, I said, come back, I'm back. All right. So he told God about his problem. He told him about it. He started telling God, you know, he started acknowledging who God was, amen. So acknowledging uh, what his problem was, he, 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 he acknowledged God's greatness. Aren't you the God that created every kingdom? Aren't you the one that are in heaven? Don't you rule over all the kingdom, amen. Is it not power in your hand, amen, to, uh, and, uh, and might, that there's nobody that can withstand you or fight against you, Amen. And so, 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 the thing is, the second thing he did is, and I'm counting up in this, it, is that he acknowledged his own lack of ability. Sometimes your responsibility is your lack of, of ability, but at the same time, a part of responsibility is you taking the, uh, the responsibility of uh, being, uh, uh, being, how shall I say, being the one that says, I enabled the situation. Yes, amen. And, but I'm not strong enough uh -huh. to fix the situation. All right, all right. He acknowledges his own lack of ability. Yes, yes. My responsibility uh -huh but my lack of ability uh -huh. to fix it. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad that God specializes. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That he, when we mess up, man, it will be something else if the only way we could get to him is that we had to fix it before we got to him. Oh None of us would be there. We all would be outside. We'll never make it in. Oh God. Sometimes it's getting to this point that gives you the most strength in your life when you have to say that I am not able to do this. Oh, come on, come on. You know, uh, you know, in dealing with um, AA, NA, uh, father-in-law was in there, amen. And, and the thing is, one thing I, I noticed that with that, it was the ability to say, I can't do this by myself. You have to get to a place where you realize that you can't do this by yourself. That's why we're talking about flipping the script. The script was, I'm on my own. I got, you know, just like a Monopoly game, go to hell, 
don't collect $200. And that's it. You, you land on the wrong property. Amen. From day one, we land on the wrong property. Amen. We, walk, we were born in sin and shaped with the iniquity. Amen. From day one, we didn't have a chance. Yeah, man, you didn't, you didn't make a choice. Amen. Before you can make a choice, you are already a sinner. Before you can say, I am, you are. Amen. Thank God. Amen. So, 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 then we find out that we couldn't get out of sin. Amen. And the only way to get out of sin, and I'm going to get to that in a minute. Amen. But what I found from Jehoshaphat, because this man had been in a bad situation before, and he refused to go down the same road again. The third thing I saw that he did was that he refused to look anywhere but God. Amen. He didn't try to go to other leaders, uh -huh. try to go to other people. He didn't try to go to his staff. He didn't try to go to his wife. He didn't try to, the thing is, sometimes it's just something that you and God going to have to work out. Yes. Amen. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. He refused to look anywhere else. And that's why the Bible says this. Now, I'm going to say this. This is a commercial for pastoring. I will give you pastors after my own heart that's going to teach you. Amen. Sometimes, in refusing to look anywhere else but to God, you need to get to someone that knows God. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. I just want to say that. Amen. Amen. The fourth thing I saw and the last thing uh, I'm, I'm going to say about that, I feel like Forrest Gump. That's all I'm going to say about that. He got the whole congregation to stand with him before the Lord. Sometimes in flipping the script, you should go to God, tell God about your problem. You should take responsibility and acknowledge your lack of ability to fix it. Amen. Number three is that you should refuse to look anywhere else. But there's got to be partnership with those that want what you want. We're talking about AA Anonymous and all those things. The thing is, those little meetings, amen, it is something that they all hold on to. Just being in the community, yeah. amen, that, that you can hold on with somebody else. Amen. amen that somebody else that, that have that same problem, but you, oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. That's why we come to church because, amen, that's why we praise them because we all have the same situation. But if God is not on our side, if God is not for us, who can, oh, but God is for us, who could be against us? Yeah. Amen. And so what I find from this whole ordeal and flipping the script verse 15 is the key to the whole thing now verse 15 says this and he said this prophet the one that God sent to say something to them hearken ye all Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem and thou king Jehoshaphat thus saith the Lord unto you ain't that something he saw the Lord and here's God answering Ain't that something? Amen. Jesus said, ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and you shall find not, and it shall be open. The enemy's job, the devil's job is to keep you away from asking. Keep you away from relationship with God. Oh, my goodness. Okay, 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 okay. Here we go, here we go. All right. Thus saith the Lord unto you, be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude. These problems that you're dealing with, life circumstances, be not afraid or dis nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle yeah. is not yours, but God's. Amen. If I were to say it my last way, a uh, word to you today is make sure as you flip the script that you make sure the right person has the battle in his hands. Yes, yes. 
Because sometimes we'll flip the script or we'll hold on to the battle. And so the next day is just like the last day, but even worse, and you're getting worse. Sometimes you need to let go and let God. You need to let go and let God help to somebody in Jesus' name. What I found out is that sometimes when you get to the place where you recognize that you're not all that, it gives you something like um, David had. Uh, you know the, the scenario with David. David, he was a smaller man, amen, getting ready to fight against Goliath, amen. But sometimes, amen, in being weak, Paul says, that's when I'm strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't you know there's a lot of weaknesses that we have, but if we didn't have those weaknesses, it would not, we would not be as strong as we are today. Come on, come on. Yes, sir. Sometimes, amen, compensating for your weaknesses would cause you to grow. To, it's, grow. to grow. Okay. So so it's something that's called compensational, compensationary, compensationary skills. Amen. It's a perceived disadvantage. Amen. Causing it to be, uh, and it, what it looks like is a, 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 a disadvantage, but in disguise, it's an advantage. In disguise. You know, you know, you're the smallest guy on the football team. Amen. Everybody make fun of you and joke at you. But because you're so small, it makes you want to work harder. It makes you want to dig in. You want to be the first one that practice and the last one to lead. Amen. The first one there and the last one to lead. And so the thing is, as everybody consider how big you are, amen, they don't look at your size. They look at your heart. Sometimes that's what I think helped David win is because his compensational story I missed that word, compensatory, amen, skill. It, forced, it forces us to develop our attitude and abilities that would have gone undiscovered. It was of the Lord that this problem came. It was of the Lord that I went through this because it helped me to be the woman of God that I am today, the man of God that I am today, the saint of God that I am today. Because I, if I had not gone through that, oh my goodness, what a good story that they talk about Stephen Colbert. What, I, I love him on, on the late night show. The thing is, at 10 years old, his father and two brothers died in a plane crash. So he was on an interview on CNN, and they said, how did that make you feel? He said, it was a very sad day, but I'm glad that I went through it. And he was not glad that his father and his brother died, but he would never have turned out to be who he is if he hadn't dealt with that adversity. Because that adversity made him dig in to what was really important. That, you know, his faith, y'all ain't saying nothing, but I'm just saying that it, it, he compensated, amen, for his weakness. Sometimes when we feel that we're weak and we're, we can't go on, it's that part that Paul says, when I'm weak, that's when I'm strong. So he said, Paul says that he rejoices in his infirmities. His weaknesses, his not having it all together. Amen. Because when I'm weak, God is mighty through me. A lot of times we think that we have to be self-sufficient, but that's when we do it all. No, 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 no. Our sufficiency comes from God. That's what makes us. Amen. Who we are. Our sufficiency comes from him. That's why. If Jehoshaphat was here, he was saying, I know you're going through some pain. I know you're going through some problems. I know you cried a lot. And I know you're facing some insurmountable things. But I 
And here to tell you, Jehoshaphat would say, the battle ain't yours. Yes, yes. Don't you take ownership of something that don't belong to you. Why are you taking ownership of someone? Well, it's my problem. I did it. I messed up. But the battle yes. is the Lord. Yes. Oh, yeah, you did it. You yes. sinned. You messed up and everything. But for you to get out of it, God's going to have to help you to get out of it. Yes. For you to move on in life, move past losses, divorce, death, grievance, and things like that, it's going to take God yes. to help you. Yes. Amen, somebody. Yes. We welcome you to Back to Church Sunday only to remind you that the battle is the Lord. Flip the script in your life. Don't hold on to things that, that's not belonging to you, that belongs to God. And if it belongs to God, he got a way out. If you read this story, I told you you read the whole thing. After the prophet said this to them, you know what Jehoshaphat did? He just fell out in worship. <laughs> it's just like the burden of the world that was on him. Just, you mean to tell me God's going to help me in this? Yeah. Oh. Oh. There's somebody here just want to like, oh. hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the only thing he could do afterwards is just get those that stood with him and said, can y'all just praise God with me for a yes. moment? Can you just praise God with me for a moment? Yes. Amen. You might have it all together, but can you stand with me and praise God for a moment? Amen. Let's have one stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Hallelujah. Come on, give God some praise. Sometimes just stand with me and praise him. Did you know they won the battle because they did just what you're doing right now? They clapped their hands. They shouted to God. They praised him. They won the battle. They heard the tambourine. They heard the music. And God came through just like that. Maybe God will come through for you if you praise him this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, give him some praise. Hallelujah. Flip the script. Because the battle is the Lord. How many glad to know that the battle is the Lord? Well, you know, the Bible tells us that we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. That the only way that we can be free of sin, God will have to do it. The scripture let us know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believing in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. I told you we were born in iniquity, born in sin, shape of iniquity, and that we were go to go, go to hell, do not collect $200, that we had a, 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 a fate that looked like that was it. But we don't live by fate, F-A-T-E. The Bible says the just shall live by their faith. Their dependency on God. Their trust in God. Yes, yes. They're refusing to hold on to anything else Amen. but God. Today is a day that you can flip the script in your own life. There's issues that you're going through. You can't make it by yourself. The Bible tells us how we can get in right standing with God. How do we get in right standing with God? Repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission or removal of sin and God will fill you with the Holy Ghost. Amen. So the Bible lets us know it's two things, that, three things you got to do. Repent, be born of water and of spirit. Repentance is having a mindset saying, Lord, see when you repent, you say, Lord, you take the reins. In, in the world, they say, Jesus, take the wheel. Amen. That's why you got so many accidents. Out there. But anyway, I'm back. I'm back. Lord, take the reins. Take the reins. Lord, I, 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 listen, you know what I'm going through. And I think the biggest problem that stops people from repenting is pride. You know, I mean, I, I got to, you know, 
uh, I have to change my life. I got to turn around. But listen, if you don't do it, you deal with the same issue over and over again. And if, if the Bible lets us know that the, that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We, okay, you got two things. Wages of sin. Wages. A payday for sin? A gift. Amen. We, one of the terms that we use, you know, a lot of people are religious. Religious says do. I got to do this. I got to do this. But Christianity, or being saved, says done. That's what you have to do. It's done. Christ died on the cross, shed his blood so that you can be free from whatever you're going through. Can you see that? It's done. It's done. That's why the battle is the Lord. God knows how to bring us out. He knows how to deliver us. If you're here today and you haven't given your life to Christ, you can flip the script today and come and give your life to God Surrender your him, surrendering to him, saying, Lord, I'm sorry, forgive me. I want to be baptized in Jesus' name. I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I want you to take over my life. Amen. Praise God. Amen. If you're here and you want prayer, we have ministers that will pray for you. Amen. And lay hands on you. They will have a mask on, of course. But the thing is, I just want to say to you that you could come today. This is your day to be free. This is your day. Amen.